Are you ready to get your feet wet? Because this is The Knowledge Pool, hosted by Gathering Information. We're here to bring you a casual conversation between friends about everything to do with collecting, trading, and playing Magic the Gathering. I am Tams. I am Steph. And I am Laura. So put on your bathing suits and dive right into The Knowledge Pool. Hello, everybody, and welcome... Uh-oh. Are we on episode 19? I have no idea. We'll just say yes. We're on episode 19 of uh, The Knowledge Pool. I'm Step, and with me is Tams. Hey. And Laura. Hello. And Salem. He's purring. Ugh, he missed his cue. <laughs> Get with it, Draft Cat. He was meowing his full head off a moment ago. And we're here to chitty chat about ma- m- magic? <laughs> magic. Meowgic. Well, uh, that'll... That's foreshadowing for later. <laughs> That's a good. So uh, we usually start off with the news. What what news? Uh, well, there has been an update to the one v one official Magic Commander ban list. This is uh, generally relates to the one v one online uh, on Midgo uh, ban list because, of course, in person you can play with whatever ban list you want. But uh, probably the most important, they have banned Vile Smasher. Yeah. Oh. Which is not shocking at all if you've ever played against it. Yeah, it pretty much ends games. Especially in 1v1, where there's only one opponent that it can deal damage to. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So, that not that big a surprise, but um, probably a good thing. Let's see. Other bans include Ponder... Preordain and Brainstorm. All which of are... which go very well with, of course, Brawl. Yeah. And uh, Treachery, I don't know. Three blue blue, when Treachery comes into play, untap five. Oh, okay. Also known as the <laughs> penultimate cube card. You control enchanted creature. Sure, so it's yes. a free it's a... Yeah. mind control. Which, of course, can be exploited if you have mana ramp. Uh, oh. Things that make your land tap for multiple manas. Mm-hmm. Things like that. So, However... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's a very strong card. However, there were some unbannings. Interesting. Uh, we've well, got... Do you see that as often? I don't think so. You, sometimes. Um, it's kind of like unbannings in modern that happen, and then people say it was a mistake, or why were these cards ever banned? But Yeah, because a lot of times they wait until they're sure it won't have that much of an impact on the format before banning it. Yeah. Mm. You know, strictly better versions have been already... Uh, put into the meta, or there are more answers. And these are also cards that I think are reasonably hard to find. Mm -hmm. Well, Painter's Servant is easier, but we've got Biorhythm, Limited Resources, Painter's Servant, and Trade Secrets have been unbanned. So, nothing I'm terribly excited about. Uh, I mean, probably is a good thing about the Vile Smasher, basically. Yeah. And also the Blue Cantrips, because Blue's very strong in Commander. Yeah. Blue's strong in any format where you get to play, like, legacy cards. Yeah, basically. So, yeah. So, probably for the better. We'll have to see how the unbanning shake out, but... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Overall. And it's 1v1 commander um, tournament style, so I don't really care all that much. Yes, one, like, 1v1 in person. You can still just play whatever you want. Yeah, and I intend to. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I have been toying with a... Uh, new format idea that I'm still trying to work out, but I like the idea of the partner um, mechanic for commanders, Yeah. but am interested in, you know, cards that don't actually have Yeah, partner. it is very restrictive just in the fact that it's a new mechanic, so there are very few commanders that do allow you to partner up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it would be interesting if you were allowed to partner up older historical cards that, you know, might make for interesting gameplay or even some that have been in formats recently that would make sense to be partners like brizella like if you can't have sure. brizella as your commander you have to pr- choose either bruna or gisella mm-hmm. and then the other one can't even be in the list yeah you know because it's a different color mm-hmm. so uh, maybe i'll get back to you once i think this out a little more <laughs> as to possible new format that hopefully somebody i know might help me test who knows sure no idea who's looking at there don't know so next up for news uh spoilers so the whole of our of devastation has now been spoiled Mm -hmm. that it has our our good friend 
Stab and Tams have already put together a very in-depth set review, including one that's specifically just designed for instance and combat. Um, so if you are interested in hearing all about the whole set, definitely check those out. I believe they're available on this feed and also on the YouTube channels. Yep. Yep. We um, turned it into a podcast for those who don't have time. Like, I don't have time to sit in front of the YouTubes and watch a set review. So, like, Yeah, nor I, I don't have the inclination to do that either. No, yeah. so I just like to have it on my iPod or my cell phone or yeah. something. So, I yeah. do watch one because I'm interested in what the gentleman has to say, but he doesn't do uh, uh, audio only, but mostly yeah, me too. I'm just me too. listening while I'm doing other things. In the other other cases, like I listen to three set reviews before mm-hmm. a set because I love that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, But um, yeah. just in general, we wanted to talk a bit about uh, overall impressions of the set now that we kind of have an idea of where all the cards are going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you have any overall impressions of the set? I really want blue green to be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think green is going to be very good. Well, green's always good, I mean, uh, except for battle for Zendikar, yeah. where it was dreadful. But you know, in in Almancat, green was very strong. It had some of the best commons. It had some of the best creatures. Uh, it had ways of interacting with your opponent's stuff in ways that were good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, the problem is just that the blue as the support wasn't really the best pairing like you could get something like bound to the luxo which helped you ramp and draw cards but usually mm-hmm. you would die before you really got the benefit of that because your yeah. opponent was playing red white aggro and they would just smash you in the face a lot um whereas green paired with like black for the removal or red for the early game that sort of thing was usually a lot better yeah those were the more on the rails or color pairings green too. white even just with yeah. a couple of the on crop champions on yep. tapping all of your exert creatures mm. yep. uh, and um so I want blue green to be good. There are a couple of uh, nice cards in this set as well, like the one three bird that lets you just draw cards mm-hmm. for what mm-hmm. three blue green or something like that. So I want them to be. I I think it's still not going to be the best, but it might be better. Well, I honestly think that this set is going to slow down a little bit um, from where Amonkhet was. Um, I know that there are aggressive mechanics, but there are also um, I don't know. They just don't seem as pushed as the exert from Amonkhet. So mm-hmm. I think that paired with the fact that there are other slower mechanics is going to make for a little more um, sure. I think balanced. I think kind of the, the big experience. problem, just specifically with that color combination, is that most of the payoff cards, the dual cards, are rare or uncommon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whereas you know, with with green white. You also had rares and uncommons, but green and white, just the commons, you could build a deck out of it and it would be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So do you think it's going to slow down even with Afflict being what it is? Like, we've only seen uh, one, two games in progress. We watched Loading Ready Run did a pre-pre-release mm-hmm. where yeah. they did it, and we saw Kathleen and Graham play, and he just got face-stomped by Afflict. It was gross. I I don't know because I haven't watched the entire thing. I haven't mm-hmm. had time. We were too busy set reviewing. And of That's course, true. sealed is different from limited. It's Absolutely, true. sure. From, from a draft, like yeah, you probably wouldn't be able to draft in a flip deck because the cards just seem very strong. Yeah, and you know, I think for me the bottom line is I really want this to be slightly slower because there are a lot of really good, really exciting rares, yeah. and even some really exciting uncommons, but. They generally have a really expensive cost. And if this is like uh, Amonkhet itself, I doubt very much you're going to get to play any of them. Yeah, which is unfortunate, because when you open a bomb rare... Because, I mean, if you look at the horse, which is the (laughs) one I'm... One of the ones I am the most excited to play with. Even your horses. Oh, it's so good. Life gain. And you get five, five indestructible horses. It's so good. Mm -hmm. But it's only so good if you can get to its casting cost. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's not like Regal Caracal, for example, which was at five mana, but also brought along two 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 life linkers with it. To exactly, help the exactly. So I don't know. I am. Um, I want it to be a little slower. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but sure. we'll. I guess we'll see. Blue though does seem to again be the support color. The the um, instants and sorceries, for the most part, don't seem particularly strong. Yeah. There were a lot of strong rares, and then a lot of duds, and, and then the rest flyers. of it sort of just kind of fell flat during the set review 
although the whole set kind of seems to have a fairly flat power level to begin with. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking over how many afflict creatures, uh, and it looks like seven, eight, eight-ish, uh, and most of those are rare. Mm -hmm. so, so that's not going to make a huge impact. Then. While it seems very strong, yeah, I don't know that it'll make so much of an impact. At draft. On, At on, draft. In a draft, yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out this weekend. And, of course, the other thing is just that you're drafting your pack of Almanket last. Yeah. yeah. So you won't know what available super, you know, aggressive exerty creatures from Almanket you'll have available until after you've chosen your archetype. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with only one pack of them instead of three. Like, that's the other thing about Amonkhet, you got critical mass of these amazing oh, yeah. aggressive cards, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I'm uh, I'm really excited, though, because there's a lot of really neat stuff. There's some stuff that we noticed almost seemed color shifted. A little bit, yeah. Two um, or three cards that we were like, whoa, this feels very green. Some of the rare creatures just yeah. seemed to be not in the color that I would have initially expected. Yeah, and some cards were just odd strangely built in a way that we're not used to seeing and um it's just looks really cool well i think i mentioned the red white uncommon last week it felt like a black card in fact it felt like a, a card that was like double black mm -hmm. one black black and mm -hmm. i can see it in red and white and it makes sense but it if you'd asked me before telling me the mana cost i would have told yeah. you you know and black, I'm also black. kind of interested to see how well Eternalize plays out. Yeah. just on the face of it, it seems too slow and as though it's not going to have enough power. But if the format does end up slowing down a little bit, mm -hmm. you are actually consistently getting to the six mana or whatever. Because yeah, there, there are a handful of fours that mm -hmm. are just fantastic. And yeah. I think people will get those no problem. But there are other ones that it's like a one, one for one and it Eternalizes for six. And you're like, Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I am never running that in any deck ever. Uh, I can see cases but where. But what I if would you had embalmer's tools? It. I would never run that <laughs> in any <laughs> deck <laughs> ever. Yeah. That's the mill card. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, it's the mill card. That's right. Yeah, exactly. The quotations uh, mill hey, card. It makes your eternalize cheaper. Hey, somebody tried to mill us out with that in Magic <laughs> Online. And look at and came how close. That they, yeah, they lost it's true. to creatures, but it was really funny. Anyway, I'm very much looking forward to finding out how the draft goes at the release night. But before that, I'm going to get to go to a pre-release, and I'm very sad that you two are going to miss it. Yes. Chance mm. and I are going to be out of town, as we have mentioned previously, so we will not get to pre-release in person. We're definitely doing some sealed pools online, though. Mm -hmm. Yay! We so need excited. to prepare ourselves. That's right. For GP Toronto, which is coming up shortly. Yep. Uh, three weeks away, is that right? Something like that. All it's three of us are signed up. The weekend of the 21st, 22nd, 23rd of July. Oh, so exciting. So, yep, we're all going. We're all going to report back and let you know how it goes. But just in the meantime, I guess, what are we all planning on doing to prepare for it? Well, well I'm going to a pre-release. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to do some online stuff. I, one of the things that I'm definitely going to be doing, and this is just my neuroses. My crap, it's two weeks away. Um, providing <laughs> the online thing cooperates with me. There is a mock draft um, page out there. Uh, it's like the Bestiaire. And um, it allows you to crack packs, just draft like you would a draft, and then allows you to build the deck. And I will sit for, I think I probably did over 300 drafts for Cal <laughs> for um, Almanket. Um, yeah. Just for me, it's a visual thing, learning the cards from seeing. I have really bad eyesight. And so it's hard for me to read across the table and I have a bad memory, so it's even worse. <laughs> so for me, the quicker I can learn by sight, by um, art, and the quicker I can see what I can combine with what to do what, the happier I am. So I will probably, if it's up, I will do a lot of that. Sure. And yeah, honestly, just knowing the cards and being familiar with the cards gives you a huge advantage sure. in something like a pre-release or a GP that's just a couple of weeks after a set release. Yeah. Yeah. I think knowing what is not playable will mm -hmm. be really helpful because it seems like in this set there is... A lot less that is just completely unplayable. I yeah. think we found two or three cards, and that was about it. Yeah, like I, I said earlier, the set looks like it's very flat in power level, but that's not 
a bad thing. That means that it looks like most of the set's just going to be fun to play with on some level. Yeah, and Amaket right? was the same thing. Like, yeah. I'm sure there were cards that were better than others, but there were also just some cards that were completely unplayable, except for Index, that were fine themselves. Mm-hmm. So Also, I think there are, like, five red burn spells or you something. You can never like... have too many, right, Tim? Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> there are a lot. And, and they go up to... F- Five, I think five damage uh, is the top one. That's the one that only hits red uh, permanents. But yeah, isn't there also a fireball? Oh, but that's for yeah. There's a fireball oh, no, for there's... creatures. I think it might be at rare though. Uh, there's something that deals six damage to a player. Yeah, but I think there's. Weren't we talking about the fireball for creatures? That kind of it's X. But anyways, um... yeah. In sealed, your removal certainly should. And will often guide you in your color choices. Yeah. Absolutely, but like when we when we looked at the the power and toughness, there is one eight eight, which is that amazing black demon that is like black 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 and five. Mm-hmm. That's never going to get played. But I'm so smart, first but... decking it, first pe- picking it, and I'm going to make it work. And it's I'm not going to get to cast it, and I'm going to cry, and I don't care. <laughs> um, there is a seven seven in green, and then it, pretty much everything else is fives, fours, threes. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of three twos and two threes. Yeah, yeah. like oh, a see, lot huh? of but, three twos and two threes. Yeah, I mean that's why those who served as a two four mm-hmm. was honestly just a great vanilla creature in in Amonkhet because yeah. the stats lined up very well. Actually, that's an interesting question um, that I want to ask you because you weren't part of our set review. That is true. Uh, you like those who serve. Uh I certainly was stronger in the beginning of the format than later on, but that's also because I played a lot more white in mm-hmm. the beginning of the format than later on. Right. Um, just because by the end, I was mostly playing in our league, and so I was playing green-black. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, if they played at those who served, I was quite happy to take advantage of the time that it gave me to play a bunch of six sixes. That's fair. Um, what do you think of Dutiful Servants? I looked at it, and I went, oh, it's those who serve. Er, oh, wait. I don't know if the extra mana cost is worth it for the additional point of toughness, hmm. to be honest. Like, I, I tend not to play four drops that have low power. Yeah. I don't know if it's just my way of playing things, and I certainly don't mind playing vanilla creatures, although I tend to prefer otherwise if I can end up four and five and six. You usually have a lot of choices. No, I think that's correct. Um, I think the fact that um, those who serve was three mana mm-hmm. was what made it so playable because Absolutely. a three mana two three is sort of where you're at, and then a three mana two four is oh that's it's actually a blocker big yeah. Um, but when you get to four mana, you're used to a two four with an upside, and mm-hmm. one extra toughness is not an upside. Not really. Right? Not compared to look at cards and rearrange them and yeah. then dump some into your graveyard if you don't want them. Like yeah. Or just a uh, a three three flyer for no that's going to be five at least, but like a three three on the ground for four is probably better than a two five. Yeah, generally, just because it usually will block better because it will kill more things. Yeah, and later in the game, that's a lot more to do with what you're looking for. I, so also like the art, the is art is almost, almost identical. identical. I I like I said, I looked at the card, thought uh-huh. it was those who served. Uh, and then went, oh, wait, no, this is our, wait, that's a different card. Oh, yeah. oh I see what they did there. So. Yeah, but, uh, and there are a bunch of aggressively costed cards, too. Like, the Marauding mm-hmm. Bone Slasher is a 3-3 three, three for 3. Yeah. Which. In black. In black. And you'd think that would have a downside, and the downside is that it can't block. Oh, well. In black. <laughs> I, am I blocking with this ever? No. Unless no. you control another zombie. Oh. In, in black. black right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah. My only sadness, I think, in the whole thing is that the zombie wall is probably not ever going to get played. You're obsessed <laughs> with the zombie, zombie wall. it's a zombie wall. You know what? Did you see the picture? We're... It's like zombies. That's a wall. We're going to find uh, Grave Bramble, and we're going to get the guy who... Uh, made Plants vs. Zombies to sign it for you. <laughs> that would be amazing. And then you can have your zombie wall. I want it to be good. Your, your playable zombie wall, by the Yay. way. Yay! Yeah, that's fair. So just the other thing about the set, though, uh, that I've seen pointed out is that there aren't really any standard crushing bombs like there have been in past sets. 
That is true. I th- also think that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you. That's like, that, if we can go an entire set without having a ban, that That'd would be probably fantastic. be happy. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of cards that are going to be nice sideboard staples, probably. Yeah, the You've cards. The oh, absolutely. Hate. Yeah. Um, and, of course, there are a ridiculous amount of Oh wow, that'd be great in Commander. Yeah. So, which is fun, you know. Mm-hmm. And there are also some some cards where you look at it and go, "Ooh, that would be fun to build a janky deck around." Mm-hmm. Especially if the power of standard has been dialed back a little bit with some of the recent bands. I, I mean, I can't speak for all of the stores. I know that at ours, generally, it has a pretty high percentage of brews and um, yeah. and budget decks and things like that. Not too many people just bring in the latest net deck unless it's for game day or something. But the fact that there isn't just a deck in standard generally means that the diversity and the number of people who are willing to put money into a standard deck and then come out and play it yeah. is much higher. That's when I have the most fun, but I also love when you hear something like, hey, did you hear what just took down the the mm-hmm. SCG whatever, or the standard yeah. on, on the weekend? Or the Pro Tour? Oh, it was Blue Red Thopters. What? <laughs> Where did that deck come from? Oh, you know, there's just all these thopters that are playable. And then, like, the black, mono-black zombies. Mm-hmm. What? Where did that come from? Like, I love stuff like that because it it shows you that brewing is not uh, just an um, exercise in futility. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, at our shop, there are certainly a couple of people who are well-known for coming in with brews and doing extremely well at tournaments. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We've got some really good brewers. Yeah, yeah and... You know, and it, they don't always work, but whatever. And not only that, but I, I think it's a, you know an interesting discussion of brewing versus net decking. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. as people who are, you know, we spend a fair amount of time thinking about magic and stuff like that. I don't brew that much. Mm. I will often adjust decks. Like I'll go, oh, that's a great idea. Let me just change out these and, and switch this around or whatever. But I just don't really have the time. To, to constantly be refining and testing things out. and I get what you mean about not having the time. That's the the biggest reason I don't play standard that mm-hmm. often. But when I do play standard, it will be because I thought of this really interesting brew and want to go and play it for a mm-hmm. month, mm-hmm. like I did with the mono white thing. Yeah, um, And that has been my past experience too. I have yet to net deck anything and play it. Um, I don't think I have. I absolutely no, I would do that if I yeah. had the money to, you know, buy a deck and try it. Because mm-hmm. I also love seeing what other people brew. And here's the thing. I learn. I feel like I've learned and growed, uh, growed? Grown? <laughs> grown a lot as a Magic player in the last five years. Because mm-hmm. there was a time where I stuck my nose up in the air at the thought of net decking. I'm like, that's like cheating. It's like going and taking somebody else's work. And cheating. Like, why would you do... I couldn't understand it. And then I finally figured out that, you know, it is a separate skill, first of all. And you can learn so much from somebody else's stuff. And then it makes your ability to do a thing stronger. Absolutely. So I think there's room for both. I think so, too. And I think it kind of ties into what we were talking about before we started the podcast about listening to multiple vo- voices. Mm-hmm, something and we wanted, we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Well, do we want to just kind of dive Jump into it? Too. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. Like net decking is one of those things that it it's given sort of a dirty name, mm-hmm. but or dirty sounding name. Mm-hmm. But really what you're talking about is being part of the magic community and learning from them. Mm-hmm. You no. Know? And not only that, but a lot of um, people who do net deck then go on to just provide feedback. Like, hey, yep. basically I am playtesting this deck for you. Here are mm-hmm. my experiences. Here's what I ended up changing. You know, so that you as the creator of the deck that has been decked, which presumably you have shared with the internet, mm-hmm. yeah, in, in the hopes that other people will play this deck that you created on your own and provide feedback, yeah. that just makes you a better brewer. Yeah, And that's yeah. not just one person going in and winning a tournament with a deck making the best list. It's a thousand people going and playing that list and finding out all of the different um, permutations mm-hmm. that are either better or worse than it appears at first glance. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. really one tournament doesn't tell you that much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And that, this is something we want to talk to today. Kind of our main topic thing is community. Magic is different than a lot of games. Uh, not A lot of games have communities. 
But magic, up to this point, my experience has been, it's been very much people excited to teach other people the game and help them get better as players because it makes us all better as players. Mm -hmm. It's been a very warm and welcoming and um, educational kind of experience. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to forget that people are people. And yeah. sometimes not great things happen. So without giving, pointing names or fingers, um, we have viewed this week, you know, a rather um, renowned or um, popular, infamous, infamous popular, <laughs> yeah. um, YouTuber, um, magic player, telling his um, viewers whether rather whether in jest or seriously, I, who knows, I'm assuming seriously, but that they should not watch other people's content. Yeah, you've got other no, people's you've got set no reason review. to listen to anybody else. All you need is to listen to me because I'm obviously the best source of information, so why listen to anybody else? Yeah, and then their his listeners have gone on to other um, magic playing YouTubers sites, downgraded their videos, and then said, you know, you shouldn't be listening to this or whatever. And I'm sorry, but that kind of behavior just doesn't belong here. That flabbergasted me when I heard about it. I which mean, is why kind of why we're talking about it. Normally yeah. we wouldn't. There is something to <laughs> no? be said of you cannot necessarily be responsible for what your listeners, viewers, fans do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But you're, we're assuming that these people are magic players as well if they're watching the content. And I just think that's a really, really bad thing to be getting into. As far as I'm concerned, um, we do a set review. We do it a little bit differently than Limited Resources or the Mana Leak, but that doesn't mean we think that their content isn't either as good as ours or as good as ours but a little different. Mm -hmm. So we watch their stuff too. We watch other things. And I think it's really great to have different voices offering different opinions in a game that there's so much nuance and variation mm -hmm. that it's just making us better to hear everybody. Well, especially because yeah. a lot of people just have different approaches. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And... Mm -hmm. I mean, even just your preferred colors. Yep. There's three different approaches at this table. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the way that we evaluate a card, you know, like surely for a set re uh, review, you try and be a bit objective and go, yeah. just generally, how would this card do? But you always have your little biases, and absolutely. that's fine. If I were left to review a set, I am never <laughs> going to be as strong a reviewer of a blue card mm -hmm. as you, who has a lot of experience playing the color. Like, I don't have a ton of experience, so I may miss things that you may catch. Oh, absolutely. And same with me. You know, if you show me, like, a super aggressive red card, I'll be like, yeah, but what if you draw it on, like, turn 10 and use a red card, use a red player? Like, what am I doing on turn 10? I'm on the <laughs> next game be talking about it. And that's why it's, I love that there's more than one person involved, but I think it's just one of those things that in this game we play, we can only get better by learning from one another. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we made one error that we know of in the set review, and so it's, it was the only one. The rest was perfect. Sure, we. Uh, it's the only one you need to listen to. Yeah. Oh, oh wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so we miss. We just misread a card, and everyone who's ever reviewed a set has done it. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Famously, so, in some. So cases. it's great to know that if somebody is listening to us, they go and listen to somebody else. Like say they go and listen to the Man Leak, and he doesn't miss that thing. They have the two things. They can look at it. They can make their own decision. It mm. uh, makes me feel better that if we miss mm -hmm. something, there are other people there kind of that have our back almost, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it because, I mean, there are some people who treat um, streamers and content creators as though they're competition, but nobody um, popular that I have heard of takes it that way. Mm -hmm. Like, you look at... Um, uh, the command zone guys and the loading ready run guys and they consistently say like we get people asking oh whose um, code should we use for this and that and they're like eh, whatever switch it up we're, we're all one big family yeah and that I think is why I was so upset by this and maybe mm -hmm. I'm just naive and this happens all the time but I haven't seen it much and the personalities that we watch they're all genuine, seem to be genuinely nice people who may be spiky in their play at times, but they're respectful people. 
Well, I think at least part of that is just because very few people actually make a 100% living off of magic. Most people are just doing it because they love magic. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. That's and true. it's easy to say, oh, well, I don't really care whose code you're using. It's great that you're buying new cards. You're keeping our yeah. game going. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair, too. But at the same, I think, I mean, not to pimp out too many other people's <laughs> stuff here, but uh, I was listening to, I think it was Limited Resources a couple of weeks ago, and... LSV was telling a story about how his teammate said, mm -hmm. you, you know, corrected his opponent saying, I don't think you drew your card for the turn. And then that card ended up killing him in the match. Yes, yeah, like, in that turn. And like, if this were just a competitive, like, bloodthirst sport, um, that kind of thing wouldn't happen. But it does because all we care about across i don't know if i'd say the majority but it's a, a very positive place to be is showmanship and um good good games wanting to have good games yeah mm -hmm. well i think also probably our perspective is a bit skewed just because the store that we choose to frequent mm -hmm. is also very inclusive and does its best to build up a strong community That's whereas kind that of is why we go I, there i yeah. have been to a few of the other stores in town and I mean, whilst I've never had a bad experience with, you know, staff, barring one, um, the player base are just not necessarily people I would choose to spend a lot of time with at, mm -hmm. at some of them. Yeah. And that's fair, too. You know, just more competitive or maybe a bit uh, more immature, yeah. since we're all slightly older, uh, than perhaps, the, than, than the average demographic, yeah. gamer, yes. Um, or, you know, just maybe not as welcoming to women mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. our shop is and so it's very easy surrounded by our friends and people that we get along with pretty well and who are all polite and respectful and want people to have a good game mm -hmm. to say that that is what the majority is like yeah that is fair too that I just feel makes like... me sad that if that's <laughs> i just feel like that's what the majority should be like because it's a it's a game it's an intellectual pursuit and it seems to me like helping others improve can only mean better experiences in the long run for everyone. Mm, but, I mean, part of that's just what do you plan on getting out of it? For all of us, it's I enjoy having fun. Mm -hmm. I really like the way that it makes us think. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Whereas for some people, it's just, I want to win. Mm -hmm. I enjoy winning a lot. <laughs> I enjoy winning most when I'm against high-level competition. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So the trying to trip my opponents up is just not my play style. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful very hopeful because it seems that the people who are currently leaders um the people that we watch on the internet the people that are in the upper echelons of play seem to be decent leaders as far as um play sportsmanship. goes sportsmanship goes um i'm sure there are some spiky salty players out there but for the most part my experience at least in watching even just watching coverage has been genuine, nice people playing a game they love. And at, at the end of the game, they're like, oh, good game, man. That was a tough one. And that's what I love to see. It makes me feel better about playing because I really am very spiky, but it's against myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have problems. I, um, I'm not that comfortable playing against people who are aggressive, but in that salty kind of way well and we just finished watching a game in progress where during the game there was maximum salt and, <laughs> and then after it was over they were like ah it was a good game yeah but it was funny it was silly and... yeah it was it was you know oh i'm so salty i'm so salty i'm gonna i'm gonna rain you with salt and in a very joking yeah. pun type of fashion pouring tablespoons of salt into water and drinking it and I then mean, realizing this is a bad idea <laughs> i mean that's kind of the pitfall of multiplayer too versus 1v1 like you can go all out against your opponent in 1v1 because that's the point of the game right? yeah and that's an interesting point because that is the reason i prefer 1v1 yeah. me time. too or two-headed giant where you have a teammate and you have an opponent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if there are two opponents, well, there's still just your opponents and there's only one. There's only two teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so what has your experience, Laura, been in the community as a female so far? So generally all right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I 
basically had one person in particular at one of the larger stores just kind of in the downtown of our city um when i came in and said hey i'm i'm fairly new to paper magic uh how how do you recommend someone get into it he said um you should probably try this other store which is the store we play at where this store is not not the best maybe to get started at so yeah i certainly appreciated the advice because the honesty our store is great for people who are just getting started and that's the Gamers Emporium. If you're in <laughs> London listening, you should come check us out. We're awesome. You should absolutely come check us out this weekend because it's going to be the pre-release for Hour of Devastation. It's mostly and sold out. It's the largest one in London. It is. And it is awesome. But, you know, aside from that, even at our store, I've occasionally had people who acted in a way that I would consider slightly off in the sense that you don't necessarily realize it. Like, I've had somebody... Um, try and correct me on something mm-hmm. and I'll go they'll go you know oh you you can't do that or uh, I had someone try and rules layer me right after that whole pro tour um kerfuffle where the whole moving to combat shortcut was brought up yeah and so he then tried to rules layer me in the way the that wrong way. in the ro- exact yeah. wrong way he was like oh well if you're trying to do this well then I haven't left my combat base I was like no that was the entire point of the shortcut was so that you would recognize that we are still moving to your combat phase. We are not in your main phase sort of thing. And he's like, oh. And then, you know, when you're there, you're just like, oh, well, he's just not really that great at magic or something. And then looking back on you, you're like, well, wait a sec. Was he just trying to, like, angle shark me because he thinks I'm a woman and I don't know any better? Like, would he have tried that on a man? Yeah. That is one of the things that's kind of tricky. Um, I've experienced it not just in magic, but just in stuff in general, is that because I've had it happen and it's so very blatantly a I'm a girl thing, we've witnessed it at mm-hmm. the um, event we went to, the, the... The team thing? The team sealed we went to. And after the game, the one guy's like, you lost to a girl, really? <laughs> and it's just like, ugh. So that any other time... And both of those players were like under, I don't know, 17 or whatever. Like yeah. they were, They were very young and dumb and hopefully they grow out of that yeah but it it does make you kind of question when people do do things like that are you doing that because you think i'm you're in the right or you're doing that because you think i'm a woman and therefore Mm -hmm. i'm not innately good at this game or something yes i've also gotten the occasional oh are you here because your boyfriend plays yeah which is great it's like no I, I am a, a separate individual who has my own likes and dislikes, and I can like games just fine on my own. Thanks. Mm. Yeah. And what we love is that there is a female at the store now whose boyfriend doesn't always draft with her. He comes and picks her up. Yeah. And that's fantastic. I just <laughs> yeah. love that. So it's, cute. it's so nice to see more girls coming out. Um, you don't see, like, there aren't a ton of of uh, there's not a lot of female representation just even in the um upper echelons of streaming or anything mm. else there's only a couple handful of of women that you kind of know who they are yeah and you, that's true like especially at the pro tour level for example well and uh, i mean some of that is because when a woman gets to that competency level Wizards likes to hire her so that they have more women working in Wizards R&D. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's a, a self-feeding cycle, mm-hmm. kind of. I, I, haven't, I haven't found a lot of females that I enjoy watching play. Um, for either personality reasons. Uh, something that really turns me off is the very affected girly giggly thing that some people put on that really just drives me crazy um but also you wonder sometimes i've seen a couple of players that is it that you're this popular because you're a good strong magic player or because you're a female who has a degree of ability Mm -hmm. like where is that because you see some guys who are very popular, and they're not that great either. So I guess yeah. it's not necessarily just a gender thing. But I've heard other streamers say, you know, I think maybe this female's kind of pushed to the front because she's a girl, and we want representation. And I don't know that that's any better than being maybe. underrepresented. I don't know. Yeah. Just going back to the star thing, though, I think probably a lot of it has to do with how you present yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, I consider myself to be strong in magic. I'm a fairly confident player. Mm-hmm. So if a guy or 
anybody really, you know, tries to do something like, you know, rules lawyer me in an incorrect fashion or something like that, I have no problem pushing back. But I can imagine for women who are, you know, more uh, new at this sort of thing, or they're in, in a, they're uncomfortable in a large crowd or something like that. That would be me. <laughs> and it's easy enough to go, oh, well, I guess they're right, even though I thought I was wrong, and I'm not having you fun used anymore. To do that all the time. I have done that recently with an. I can't remember. It was in this. It was in Almond Cat, and it was so. Oh, yeah. It was with. Uh, it was in League, I think. Yeah, yeah. it was with. Um, if an ability would kill a creature, exile it instead. And the person, the, the, my opponent was like, I cast this on your Hapacha and I'm, or, um, Hazaret. Hazaret. And I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. He's like, yeah, it does. And I got all flustered because I'm, I'm, then my brain starts racing and I'm, I'm like, wait, did I miss something? No, because it doesn't die. It's only if it would, it gets mm-hmm. exiled, but it doesn't because it's indestructible, but maybe, and I'm like, okay, all right, sure. And I didn't go judge which i should have i should have at least called the store owner over Mm -hmm. to ask him but i'm just so used to deferring deferring that i was like sure okay and then afterwards i'm like dang it i knew i was right why didn't i stand up for myself yeah and i mean if you don't have a particular reason besides like curiosity to want to be in that environment yeah it's easy enough to go oh that wasn't fun i'm just gonna stay home next time yeah yeah Yeah. that's true so I feel very fortunate to be where we are for the most part mm-hmm. because I haven't had a lot of those experiences. And to be fair, that was my own fault. Um, my opponent w- is a very nice person. And if I had said, let's call a judge, they would have been like, okay. There would have been no issue with it. It was my own um, insecurities and self-doubt because I'm always doubting my abilities. Yeah, on, so. on his... Um account there that wasn't an angle shoot that no. was him legitimately not understanding how things oh work. no 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 right. no no he's a newish player and yeah. absolutely that was not him trying to get one over on me he thought mm-hmm. that that's how it worked yeah. which makes sense if you don't know the cards mm-hmm. um and i should have just been a little more but certain i mean probably that has a bit to do with again like i said our store but our store is not super competitive and it also doesn't offer massive prizes Mm -hmm. just because it's limited in space Mm -hmm. right so there's only so much that goes into the prize kitty and then Mm -hmm. at the end of the night a lot of times first place just ends up with like three packs or something like Mm -hmm. that so your entry back basically yeah um and so i think that really cuts down on a lot of the people who are more inclined to angle shoot because they want the extra prizes yeah it's probably true because I know for sure that there are certainly a fair number of players like that who just go to other stores. Mm-hmm. Like the ones that have um, box tournaments or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, because... I'm perfectly happy with our prize tournament <laughs> payouts. I've never found it wanting. And uh, especially if it means we don't get that kind of shenanigan going on, then. Yeah, because hey. at an FNM level, I basically just want to play Magic. Yes. Like if I want to go and maybe take a chance at winning big prizes. I'm going to a GP, which is where I'm going in two weeks, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that's going to be a completely different experience. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, Steph, what do you look for in a community? A welcoming. Uh, w- welcoming. <laughs> I mean, that's just it. I want um, players who I can get along with because um, having that social aspect in a mental pursuit is very important to me. Um and basically, I don't like feeling out of my depth, even if I'm not. You know, like with um, playhards, as <laughs> I generally call them, I feel like, well, I'm way out of my depth. Even if I'm sitting back listening, and I'm like, no, they're just straight up wrong about that. It doesn't feel like I'm on solid footing. Whereas with friendlier people, even if they're no more casual like Mm -hmm. even if they're just as um ruthless in whatever their format is it feels a lot more inviting to get involved in the conversation Mm -hmm. absolutely i don't feel that i am um missing out on competitive play like competitive people by playing with nice people i mean you look at uh, garrett or evan in our store. Mm-hmm. They are both, they will take every point of damage they can take on you. Mm-hmm. They're good, strong, competitive players, but they're nice people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and they don't try to 
um, get one over on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't think there's you miss out on that. I think you can be both. I think you can be competitive, and I think you can be um, sportsmanlike and friendly. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's probably why we prefer the in-person community to the online community. Absolutely. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where you have uh, specifically like the Miko online mm-hmm. community, or I mean. This could probably be applied to the Reddit community as well, but, yeah. you know, where it's easier to, to be unpleasant just because you have that anonymity. I have had those experiences on MitGo. I've also had really good experiences We've on We've had MitGo. some amazing experiences with people. It was like where they say nice deck and actually mean it, mm-hmm. you know? Or you but, get into a conversation and you're like, oh man, I'm sorry, you're flooding out. And they're like, oh my gosh, so let me tell you about the thing. <laughs> yeah. And it's really nice. It makes the feeling, it makes everything feel richer to me, I think. Sure, but yeah. on the other hand, I don't know about you, I have had those people who are flooding out and then go, oh my god, I'm flooding out. Oh god, another land, another land. Wow, you're so lucky, you're drawing spells. Yeah. God, you're... And, and uh-huh. you're sitting here going, dude, I'm just playing a game of magic. Yeah. I have nothing to do with what you're drawing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm drawing land too. Yeah. Uh, but I'm managing not to spew my salt all over the place. Like, yeah. That's one of the biggest things that I, I try to take notice of is... If I'm flooding out, or if I feel like I'm flooding out, how many lands does my opponent have in yes. relation to me? Like, if I have eight lands, and they also have eight lands, then I'm probably not flooding out that hard. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. just drawing spells of a lesser uh, quality than your opponent, mm-hmm, presumably, if you're mm-hmm. frustrated. Right. So, there, there's that. Um, and frustration can do a lot to change an experience. Yes. But... When the best you can say of an opponent on Mitgo is that they didn't say anything, it, that's not a real great um, mm-hmm. you know place to be. Mm-hmm. Although it is the place that most of my opponents have been. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. and that's why I prefer playing in person to playing on Mitgo, because a lot of my games on Mitgo are just completely silent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sure, I could be playing against a computer. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'd prefer to play in-person mm-hmm. magic. That's why the ones who actually say really interesting things in the chat are so much of a gem because mm. I love to connect in that way. I think that's why I like drafting with you, Steph. Like online. Because, yeah, online. because there's two of us and we're talking back and forth and we're discussing our picks and mm-hmm. and it's not so uh, you against the AI. Which there's a place for that. That's that has its fun too, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing I would like to see more of is, like, I would love to be involved with starting a Lady Planeswalker Society. Mm-hmm. Getting, we've t- I think we've talked about this briefly before, getting more females who might be interested but that are intimidated mm-hmm. together and playing. I think that would be really awesome. Yeah, because, mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of times, especially for women, we are much more inclined to be open and enjoy ourselves in a new environment Mm -hmm. if generally speaking it's you know just women who are around us yeah there's that you don't have that fear of you know what are you thinking of me and are you looking down on me or are you or are you going to be a jerk yeah yeah (laughs) um and I, i think it would be a really nice um thing to have around just to encourage more people because for the most part, a lot of the females that we have taught to play magic loved it, enjoyed it completely. Um, and it makes you wonder why there aren't more around playing. Mm, well, I mean, they've done a lot of studies on this, specifically Wizards has, because they mm-hmm. also are trying to, I mean, just grow the population of magic players in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a fair number of women who play magic, just they tend to play at kitchen table. Yeah, that's fair. I. One of my exes, when I first got into back into playing Magic, would never even touch the game. Even though she loved board games and card games and sold games for a living, she would have nothing to do with Magic. Why? Because it was Magic, and it's a boy's game, and it's stupid. Hmm. Wow. I, yeah, it was a really weird... Um, what do you call it? Mental dissonance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and we've had the experience out ta- explaining to females like in a restaurant and them saying, no, I'm not smart enough for that kind of thing. Uh, I and really... Like, that. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> Can you count to five? Like, seriously. Well, you know, you had that same thing when you started. You're like, I'm not... I don't know math. I can't do yep. math. Yep. I know. I, I still played, but I didn't think I would ever get to the point where I'd consider 
pushing into a more competitive or where arena. you could take down a pre-release. Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's no way I ever thought that. Um, so why was that? Because it's a very complex game, and I knew enough to know that it's a very complex game. And with me being me, as I said, I'm incredibly competitive. And I don't want to do anything unless I can do it to the very best of my ability. And it's very stressful because I put the pressure on myself every single game to be playing as well as I can. And when things fall apart, especially if it's variants, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I always feel like I'm never going to be smart enough to mm -hmm. figure this all out. I just, everyone has different learning styles. Like some people can play a game once and they're or read through the rules and they're like oh this is super easy and i'm like no 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 explain this part to me i don't get this i learn visually better show me let me sit and shadow you mm -hmm. um so understanding that took a lot um so there are still things that i still make stupid little rules errors that i know it's that i second guess myself mm. and i get myself into that i have anxiety issues too i get myself into that anxiety thing where i'm like you know i'm playing as i would normally and then i come across something now i haven't done anything with with um trample and death touch in a very long time i got that one figured out <laughs> but there was a time where i'm like i know how it works and yet i get there and then i'm like i second guess for a split second and then suddenly my brain is so twirling around i can't remember which way is right and i'm like oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm so dumb how am i not? i don't know this how do i not know this Mm. And it's it's one of those things that is a very big barrier to kind of work through. But uh, I'm getting there. And being able to to be like, oh, hey, is this how this works? And I'm just double checking. I know I know the answer, but I need input <clears throat> has been huge for me because I don't feel like I, I have this thing where I should know everything. Mm. And admitting that while I may know more than I think, it's okay to double check. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's the real reason that she didn't want to learn to play magic. My ex mm -hmm. is that she didn't feel comfortable asking questions. Mm, that that's, it's a big one. Sure. And I mean, that's why one of the huge things that's always pushed, especially at the competitive level is don't be afraid to call a judge. Absolutely. Even if it's on yourself, because if you call a judge on yourself, for example, we will do our best to get things sorted out fairly, mm -hmm. you know, and if you just call a judge for a question, great, we'll be happy to answer your question. Mm -hmm. You just have to be specific about what you're asking. Yeah, um, it's it's hard. And I, I know that a lot of people who are into, I don't know why, no, I, I kind of do why, <laughs> people who are into board games and kind of that, we also, a lot of us tend to suffer from things like social anxiety mm -hmm. and... Sure. Um, so for me, the other thing is I hate having a spotlight on myself. Now I'm a professional singer. I can stand on a stage or anywhere and sing anything at any time and not be embarrassed, but I don't like to be the center of attention when it's something like, oops, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And now I feel incredibly stupid and I just want to die. <laughs> and so that's really hard. That's another big thing is I don't want to call a judge and find out I'm wrong, but I do it anyway, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, who cares? Are they mm. going to remember next week what yeah. you did? Who cares? Yeah. I think the other thing, this is really funny. The thing that helps me the most is watching other streamers. People who are considered professional magic streamers like Kenji or watching people who may not be in the upper echelon of magic playing, but they are decent players and they play for fun and, and people watch them like Loading Ready Run and seeing them make gigantic <laughs> stupid mistakes where they've misread a card or they've forgotten a play or something else and I'm like okay remember that time Graham completely passed through the uh, attack phase and they lost the game when they had lethal on board okay I'm not doing so bad yeah but I bet he didn't do it twice in a row like no one Other at this people, table yes. ever it's okay, sweetie. It's okay. <laughs> and you were tired. Oh, God. But it just, it makes you feel better when you have this, again, it takes it back to community. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you have this community of people to kind of look to and be like, okay, we all have our days. We all make these stupid, dumb mistakes. Or we all just don't learn everything the same. So. I think they call that schadenfreude. <laughs> no, I'm not laughing at them. It just makes me feel more confident in making my own mistakes because I know that I'm not the only one who's doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If somebody like Kenji, who spent that's what he does for a living, is free magic, Literally. Um, can still make big, huge mistakes and still be a very popular and well thought of streamer, 
And me making a stupid little error is not Or even the not be sure about what the play is because mm -hmm. this is a complex game. That happens oh, yeah. sometimes. What is my best move? And it's very easy for people watching you because I've had you say to me, well, why didn't you do this? And I'm like, because uh, at the you time, say it like that. I didn't think of it and it just didn't occur to me because I was focused on this section. Yeah. And not just that, but sometimes it's a play that you made back in like turn three. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, oh, well, why did I choose this three drop over this three drop? Well, at the time, here was my reasoning. Yeah. However, upon further reflection, I maybe should have considered these other factors that would have let me choose the other one, and what would that game have looked like instead? Yeah. yeah, that's, I think, where I give up the most equity and really need to tighten up, is thinking long-term with my my plays, mm -hmm. because I've got sequencing down. Like, I've got, I'm going to use all my mana every turn if possible, but it's breaking that pattern that and when to do it that mm -hmm. I think I can pick up some, some of the best... Uh, equity mm -hmm. so and i mean again community sometimes i mean at our shop if you say hey what do you think about my play here mm -hmm. once the game's over of course 99 percent. i actually can't think of a single person who would say no sorry gotta go unless they like actually had to go yeah like yeah. everybody's very happy to just go oh well actually i mean here's what i would have done if i had been in your shoes but then again i also know i had this card in my hand and just talking over things like that is a huge part of improving as a magic player. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree completely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Community. communities are awesome. They Get should sometimes. In one. Yeah, they should be better. Or good communities are good. Yeah. So foster a good community. Be be the community you want to see in the world. It's true, but the thing is, if you aren't, hell yeah, you could be cheesy all your life, <laughs> but the thing is, if we aren't helping the new players learn how to play, and we're not helping them learn how to become better players and decent players. And better sportsmen. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have anybody to play with eventually. Yeah, because there's always going to be turnover in something like this. Yeah. People move, or they graduate, or they don't have money at the moment, or... And I do understand that some people are just getting in... I'm in for me, I'm in to see how far I can go. It's all about what I am doing and that's it. But I like to think that most people are a little more aware of the fact that this is a big community of people who are all playing the same game and we hope it's going to be around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So let's mm -hmm. hope it goes that way. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty much it for this week. Tams and I have to go off and pack. Yeah, we do. <laughs> oh, and uh, just a quick new player update the new players who we managed to get playing magic are going to their very first pre-release nice, nice. <laughs> so thanks very much for joining us here on uh, the knowledge pool mm -hmm. uh, we are going to probably be here next week with some surprise uh, topic and or guest host no promises but i'm <laughs> really going to try so uh until tams and laura get back send help <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks very much for joining us here this week thanks for listening and have a great time playing sure are we ready to test testing testing is that your normal speaking voice no this would be my normal speaking voice <laughs> there you go no point right. in testing <laughs> we're are we coming good? in loud and clear how about Salem <laughs> is he okay oh, Salem is sake. never okay <laughs> fine <laughs>